Hello everyone, it's Emily. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry that the lighting isn't the best. The sun is setting and I'm trying to use my ring light, but it's just really not working out in my favor. And it's hard to find times when the sun is bright because I've been so busy with clinical. But anyways, I decided I was going to film a redo on this video or like an update, I guess, because I filmed a video like this three years ago and it seems like a lot of people are viewing it and liking it. So I wanted to make a newer one just because I feel like that one isn't even that great of quality. It was three years ago and I have some updates now that I have more experience with studying. So I'm gonna show you kind of my tips on how to study for anatomy, specifically more anatomy like practicals. But yeah, I'll give you my tips and tricks and since I know a little bit more from basically finishing all of the didactic work of PT school, hopefully you find these tips helpful and let's just get into them. And I have my notes over here, so if you ever see me referencing them, that is why. So the best way to study for anatomy is actually to go into the lab and handle the models, or if you're learning with cadavers, then actually going and studying on the cadavers. This sounds very obvious, but that is honestly the best way. You need to get that experience looking at the models and the cadavers that you're going to be tested on. So if your school allows you to do that, a lot of schools I know have like open lab times and time during lab itself to look over them. Definitely use that time wisely and really spend time looking for all the structures that you're responsible for and making sure that you can identify them on those models in cadavers. Another thing that you can do outside of lab time is you can print out some diagrams and just different things to label and you can put them in one of those clear protective sleeves um, the, like the binder sleeves uh, and then you're, you can write on them with dry erase markers over and over again, erase them and study that way or if you have an iPad you can do it electronically and just download like a PDF file of it and label it over and over again. I definitely used to use the clear protector sheet way before and that was very helpful because you could just keep doing it over and over and over again. But recently, since I got an iPad, I started doing it on there and that's really nice because you don't have to print it out, you don't have to use paper to do it, you can just do it all electronically and I just started doing that once I kind of switched over to electronically. But either way works, whatever your preference is or whatever resources you have. One important aspect for preparing for a practical or lab exam or whatever your school calls them is finding a variety of resources. You don't want to only look at one resource. You really want to get some variety in there so you can see different perspectives and what different models might look like and stuff like that. You don't want to only be memorizing it on one type because what if your professor pulls out a random model you've never seen before or brings pictures from the internet or something like that to label and you're just not used to it. You want to be able to identify the structures on multiple bodies and models and pictures and all of that. So there are tons of apps and websites that you can use to find these resources. Some are free and some you have to pay for. So this is where you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons. I always went for the free stuff. I don't think I ever paid for any resources to study. So you definitely don't have to do that. But I know other people that did buy anatomy apps that really helped them. So just whatever your preference is, there definitely are enough things out there that are free. So don't feel the need to pay for something. So these resources are something that I definitely used and I would wait till I kind of felt comfortable with the models that I already had access to and the maybe if your professor gave you diagrams or pictures to label. I waited till I was comfortable with all of those and that's when I would go and seek out other resources so I could get more variety and make sure I was really ready for the practical and that's one way that I quizzed myself. Another resource that I found very helpful was actually YouTube because you can look up models on there and there's videos of people going through every structure on models and you can find quizzes for anatomy. You can just type in like, for example, anatomy, muscle quiz or something like that, labeling muscle quiz. If you look them up and put like quiz at the end of it, there's some videos that will show you a picture of the model and like point to a structure and then give you a couple seconds to think and then they'll put the answer. 
very helpful. There's actually even educational videos with cadavers online. I use that a lot to help study just to get more variety in what I'm looking at. And there's actually like teachers online that will point out things on the cadaver bodies and kind of give you ideas on how to remember them sometimes. Now, this is a mistake I often made and you have to be careful because I know I'm giving you all these ideas and saying, go find more resources, go find more resources. But you wanna make sure that you're not overloading yourself with a million resources because you can spend hours and hours finding all of these videos and all these models, but if you don't spend the time actually studying with them, then it's not gonna be beneficial. So don't let this overwhelm you. Pick one idea and start with that and then kind of move on from there. So I would suggest getting comfortable with the models you're provided first and then move on to more resources. Don't get caught up in just finding a million resources and then not actually having time to study them. I just know that's a mistake I made. I would just spend so much time looking for all the resources, then I would get so overwhelmed and I would be like, there's no time for me to learn all this and I'd freak out and end up not even using them. So just take a deep breath, pick one at a time. If you find yourself looking through too many resources, you just have to tell yourself, okay, this is enough, let me start with what I have and then if I want to get more, I can. So one thing that I like to do was actually start with the 2D images on paper and label them before I would actually spend a ton of time in lab studying because I would find that I would go into lab and I would just be so overwhelmed and I wouldn't know where to even start to look for anything. So. If I was feeling that way, then I would just kind of weigh the benefit of spending that time in lab and ask myself, would my time be spent better outside of lab studying differently? When this happened, I would try to make sure that I set aside some time before the open lab was happening to go through some 2D images of whatever I was responsible for studying. And I would just practice labeling on there and make sure I knew the general area of where structures would be. And then take that knowledge and bring it into lab and then look at it on an actual 3D model or cadaver and try to reteach yourself onto there. And it, I found that way more helpful because going in with at least a little idea of where the structure is, is better than going in blind and not even knowing where to start. This might sound a little weird, but I also recommend quizzing yourself first. So take that blank 2D image that you have and just try to label as much as you can because you might be surprised. You might know more than you think you do or you might be a little bit close to knowing things. So quiz yourself, see where you are, and then go through and fix the ones you got wrong. Fill in the ones you didn't know. And then you'll see how much progress you make from the beginning to the end and every minute you're spending studying is a little bit more that you're learning. So don't let that overwhelm you. I think it's a great way to quiz yourself because how are you gonna know where you need to spend your time if you don't even know what you know? You know? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I just had to. So this will help you get a good starting point. And like I said, every second that you're spending studying, that's you getting closer to a better grade on your practical and to understanding the information more and knowing where the structures are. So don't let this stress you out. You just gotta take it little by little and eventually you will be ready to rock your practical. So once you quiz yourself, that's when it's time to bring out all those resources and to start studying and then get into lab and start studying on that stuff. And then once you think that you are feeling pretty good, do a little check-in with yourself and quiz yourself again on the material. Use some resources to quiz yourself or go back to that first 2D image that you labeled the first time and see how many you can get right now, see your progress. And then you can also see if there's any other weaknesses that you can work towards. So I guess the main point here is that there are so many free resources out there that you can use to study for your practicals. You don't just have to study what is provided to you at your school or in your lab. It's actually helpful to look at other material too and not just memorize it to memorize it on those models. Like it'll help you actually learn where the structures are. But I guess my second point is that there are so many resources out there and it's important not to get overwhelmed by how many resources are out that are out there. So 
You have to find which ones work best for you. Is it the 2D images? Is it the YouTube videos? Is it the 3D models online? Is it just going into lab? Is it a mixture of all of them? Because that's what worked for me. I need a little bit of everything to get it all to click for me. So you just have to figure out what is gonna work best for you. But these are my ideas on what you can use. And I will link some resources down below. I hope that most of them are still free. Some of the ones down there are ones that I used, hopefully, Hopefully they're also free, but they were free when I used them. If they aren't, go seek out some more resources. It's pretty easy to find them. Whatever you're trying to find a model of, just look it up online, write model, 2D, 3D video, or whatever you're looking for. And usually there are some out there. And sometimes even if you type free at the end, it's more likely to show you things that you don't have to pay for. But anyways, those are all of my ideas on how you can study for your anatomy practical. I really hope you find these helpful and I know you're all gonna rock your anatomy practicals and I just really hope that these tips are helpful. But if you guys did enjoy this video, then don't forget to give it a like and also subscribe to see more videos. Comment down below any other videos you wanna see, maybe study related or not. I have gained a lot of knowledge from my years and years of school. So I'm not perfect at studying, but I definitely have some tips that I think would be helpful. Let me know if you wanna see anything else and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye.